In this video, we're going to take a look at a few more examples of derivatives of these four trig functions, tangent of x, secant of x, cotangent of x, and cosecant of x, along with the derivatives of sine of x and cosine of x, and, oh yeah, our product rule, uh, power rule, and quotient rule as well. So first up, I've got y equals e to the x times cotangent of x. And again, I'm trying to emphasize that word times because I have e to the x times cotangent of x. This is a product rule problem. So if I call e to the x, let's call that f. Cotangent of x, let's call that g. I know my product rule says f prime times g plus f times g prime. So when I take my derivative, f prime, derivative of e to the x, that's just e to the x. g is cotangent of x, I'm just going to leave that as cotangent of x, plus f, this time I leave e to the x alone, so that'll just be e to the x, times g prime, derivative of cotangent of x. You could go and rewrite that in terms of sine and cosine and use your quotient rule, but honestly, who's got the time for that right now? We could also say the derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared x. And at this point, there's really not much else we can, I guess we could factor out an e to the x if you really wanted to. Say e to the x times co, oops, cotangent of x minus cosecant squared x. And there's my derivative. It's about as far as I can go with that one. Part B, I have tangent of x divided by 1 plus secant of x. Again, that, that fraction, that divided by, hopefully making it a little bit more clear that this is going to be a quotient rule problem. So I'm going to use my quotient rule. F prime says low, so that'll be 1 plus secant of x. D high, derivative of tangent of x. Should be secant squared x, but let, us, let me double check for us. Yep, derivative of tangent of x, that's secant squared x. So let's see, d high, derivative of tangent, we just said that was secant squared x. Minus high, that is tangent of x. d low, derivative of my denominator, well derivative of one is zero. Derivative of secant of x, that should be secant x tangent x divided by 1 plus secant of x quantity squared. In my numerator, I would just simplify that a little bit, but we're not going to do too much with it here. Um, I can distribute secant squared x here. I can say, well, this is secant squared x plus secant cubed x minus over here tangent of x uh, times secant x tangent x, that would be secant x times tangent squared x, all divided by 1 plus secant x quantity squared. We could probably leave our answer like that, or again, if you really wanted to, you could factor out a factor of secant of x in your numerator. Secant of x, and that would leave us with secant x plus secant squared x minus tangent squared x divided by 1 plus secant x squared. I don't think you're going to get a whole lot nicer than that, so that looks like a good stopping point for our derivative. The other topic that I want to revisit is higher order derivatives, so I want to look at a couple of second derivatives here. So first up, I've got f of x equals tangent of x. I know first of all that the derivative of tangent of x, derivative of tangent of x is just, we said secant squared x. So when I go to take the derivative of this function, secant squared x though, I'm gonna run into a little bit of trouble because I don't know how to deal with this guy, with this, this power of two. So I need to recognize for a moment that that's secant squared x. What that really means is secant of x times secant of x. I'm multiplying these two functions together. So this is going to be 
a product rule where f is secant of x and g is secant of x. So when I think about my second derivative here, I'm going to have to use my product rule. So f prime times g plus f times g prime. So my second derivative, f double prime, derivative of secant of x. We said the derivative of secant of x, that was secant of x tangent of x times g times secant of x. Well, that's just secant of x plus f, I'll leave secant of x alone, times the derivative of secant of x. Well, we said that was secant x times tangent x. Multiplying these together, let's see, I'll have secant squared x tangent x plus secant squared x tangent of x. So I end up with two secant squared x tangent x for my second derivative here. Let's look at one last example. Here I have g of x equals e to the x times cosine of x. So again, e to the x times cosine of x. We're having a lot of product rule problems here. Here I'll call e to the x, we'll call that f. Cosine of x, we'll call that g. So when I go to take my first derivative, g prime of x, let's see, derivative of e to the x, that's going to be e to the x. Cosine of x, I'm going to leave that alone, so times cosine of x, plus e to the x, times the derivative of cosine of x. Well, the derivative of cosine of x is negative, uh, negative sine of x, we said. So maybe we'll clean this up just a little bit. This is e to the x cosine of x minus e to the x sine of x. So this is my g prime. Well, I, I wanted the second derivative, so I need to take the derivative one more time. And as it looks, it's, it's a little bit tricky. It, it looks to me, like we've got e to the x times cosine of x, that's a product rule. And over here, e to the x times sine of x, that's, a, that's another product rule. It looks like we've got two product rules here, but in problems that involve trig functions in particular, I always think it's a good idea to kind of look back at the work that you've done. We said the derivative of e to the x times cosine of x. We actually did that work already. We said that was e to the x times cosine of x minus e to the x sine of x. So when I go to find g double prime of x, when I go to talk about the derivative of this function right here, I'm actually done that work already. I actually said, you know what, that's actually just e to the x times cosine of x minus e to the x sine of x. I can use the work that I've already done. There's no need to go and do that work again. Minus, and actually there's one thing I want to talk about for uh, this term right here. And that's this minus sign right here is actually, minus signs I think for me are the easiest way to make a mistake. So to avoid making uh, a mistake here, I'm going to change that to plus a negative, and I think that should help us. So let's make this a plus. So here I am going to have to use the product rule since this is a new, a new problem. Derivative of negative e to the x, that will be negative e to the x times sine of x plus, this time I'll leave negative e to the x alone, but the derivative of sine of x I know is cosine of x. Oops. Cosine of x. So let's see. I should have some like terms I can combine. I have uh, actually e to the x cosine of x minus e to the x cosine of x. These two terms are going to cancel. And then let's see, I just have, I'm left over with minus 2e to the x times sine of x. So higher order derivatives um, are not impacted really at all. We still just, you know, if I'm with the second derivative, I just take the derivative 
of the derivative. Um, and then keep in mind, we're still working with the derivative. It still tells us all the same information it did before. So it still tells us slope of the tangent line, and it still tells us rate of change. We just have these other rules to find derivatives of new functions.